The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome this time to a tale of the supernatural. Not frightening, not in the least horrifying, but intriguing, mystifying, strange. We all of us know that in this world there is a power greater than ourselves. Call it what you will. God, a force, the universal conscious, it exists. Some of us have experienced it, felt its touch in one way or another. But few have met with it in so unusual a way as the celebrated concert pianist Anton Wahlberg. Lottie. My dear Lottie, if what you say is true. It is, Anton. I know it is. But impossible. Nothing is impossible. We only think it is. Lottie, I lost my hand. My right hand in that accident. My hand is gone. It no longer exists. And yet I am able to play. True. Your hand no longer exists. But the spirit of your hand does. Only the body dies, Anton. The spirit never. Our mystery drama... The Hand That Refused to Die was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Psychics tell us there is a life after death. Indeed, there are those who believe there are many lives after death. And others who hold a firm faith in reincarnation. We listen and go on about our daily lives until something happens that so affects our life, marks it for good or ill, that we know there is unquestionably something some invisible power, some unseen force of which we are a part. Anton Wahlberg began to realize this on the day he came home from the hospital to his luxurious penthouse apartment in New York City. Welcome home, Anton. Lottie, you. I thought you were in Chicago with your young prodigy. He can get along without old Lottie Stern for a few days. You arranged this, Alexis. No, my darling. Nothing was arranged. Lottie wanted to be here when you came home from the hospital, and here she is. Well, arranged or not, you're more than a pleasant surprise, Lottie. You're what I need. Ah, you depend on your old teacher too much. But I'm glad you do. It's very heartwarming for an ancient crone like me to be wanted, needed, by so handsome a man, so talented a man. Handsome, talented. <laughs> I have only one hand now, Lottie, this left one. What good is it to be handsome? What use the talent? Lottie, I need you, too, to cheer him up. And of course you are depressed, Anton, Depressed? But... There is no word to describe my despair, Lottie. Why did this happen? Why to me? I was at the peak of my career. I was Anton Wahlberg, one of the most celebrated concert pianists in the world. I was seven weeks ago. I no longer am. Ended everything. My career, my life ended. There is never an end without a beginning, Anton. The closing of one door is merely the opening of another. And what door might be open to me without my right hand? Only God knows. And you will too, when you seek it. Now, speaking of which, I asked Ada to serve tea in the music room. Come, let us go and seek that. Excellent idea, Lottie. Anton. I, uh, I'm not sure I ever want to enter my music room, my study again. Oh, my darling. Never mind the sympathy, Alexis. It is the worst thing in the world. 
<laughs> Come on, into the music room. I, Lottie Stern, order you. You hear me, Anton? Lottie, I, I... I don't think I can bear even the sight of the piano. Anton, you must. Ah, so... Your Ada has laid out a fine tea for us. Cucumber sandwiches, your favorite chocolate cake. Who opened and the keyboard? The keyboard? The piano keyboard. Alexis, I told you it was to be closed and never opened again. I know you did, darling. And you promised me. You promised. No, I kept my promise. The keyboard was closed when I left to bring you home from the hospital. I checked it personally. Well, perhaps Ada... No, no, I gave her strict orders. She was not even to touch the piano, even to dust it. I'd do that, I said. I cannot bear the sight of the keys. Close the keyboard. Damn it, I'll close them myself. Oh, dearest, are you trembling? Now, now, some good, strong tea will take care of that. Uh, Alexis, darling, will you pour, please? Lottie, Lottie, the day I get an ounce of sympathy from you, that will be the day. I wouldn't hold my breath. <laughs> Uh, more of this bread, Dr. Lonsdale? Some butter? Oh, uh, thank you, Alexis. Yes. Damn, there goes my fork. Oh, uh, Ada, another fork for Mr. Walbert, please. With only one hand, I'll never eat again, either. <laughs> I'll have to give you some lessons in surgical techniques, Anton. Surgical techniques? As a surgeon, I can assure you, you'll be astounded at what can be done with one hand. I know. If anyone does, you do, old friend. You saved my life. No, they... Doctor in Blaneyville. That butcher. Uh, you mustn't say that, Anton. Remember, he had to remove your hand to save your life. He had no option. What was that? Well, it sounded like... It couldn't be. Lottie, did you hear it? There it is again. Someone is fooling around with the piano in my study. Let's see about this. Uh, w wait, I'll, I'll go with you. I too. Oh, Keep No. It. The piano keyboard is open again. Uh, again, Anton? Yes, before I came home from the hospital this afternoon, I asked Alexis to make sure the lid of the keyboard was closed. And it was when I left here. But it was open when I got home. I myself closed it then, and now it's open again. Ada must be responsible Ada for this. Ada is in the kitchen, Anton. Well, someone... And who struck that middle C twice? It's curious. It's beyond reason. It's incredible. I'll, I'll close the lid. No, leave it open. And let's rejoin Lottie in the dining room. Lottie, we found the keyboard open again. Who was in there, in the music room? No one. Someone struck middle C. No, Madam Stern, there, there was no one there. Someone was. Perhaps you could not see him or her. <laughs> you mean a, a spirit, a, a ghost? Yes. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't believe in ghosts. I do. Come now, Lottie, don't tell us you've ever seen a ghost. No, no, not seen. But I have felt them near me. To tell you the truth, Anton, they are always near me. You mean the ghosts of those you knew in Auschwitz? Yes. Oh, Madam Stern, Gordon, you... dear, uh, don't be offended, but she prefers not to talk about oh, it. Oh, I, I understand. I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 it's all right. Here, here, Lottie. Uh, have some more potatoes and gravy. That will solve everything. It helps. Oh, oh, oh it's all right. It's all right, Anton. Please, everyone, it's just that when I get to thinking that maybe it might have been saved if... If you, Gordon, had operated instead of that Baron's here. You smashed your car into a tree. Your right hand went through the windshield. It was so cut up, so mangled. You could have saved it. I see it in your eyes. You could have. Anton, I'm not so sure. But I... there is a doubt in your mind. That little doubt means I might never have lost my right hand. Anton, darling. Anton. Excuse me. Please. Excuse me, I must go to him. No, no, you stay here. But I say, please. please. My dear, you are a wonderful wife to Anton, a beautiful and capable woman. But at times like this, he needs Lottie Stern. All right, all right, all right. Get it out of the system. Come on, let it come. All of it. Lottie, Lottie. I know, I know. Who would know better? My hands, you see? 
You know what they did to them. The Gestapo at Auschwitz. I know, I know. They broke your fingers one by one. And when they healed, broke them again. And your career, Lottie, that was ended too. Yes, it was. And I felt, well, there are no words. How can you describe the sudden darkness in the soul, the emptiness in the heart? The physical pain, it was bad. Each finger snapped. It was horrible. The pain, unbearable. But all this, nothing compared to what went on inside me. So, my darling Anton, I know what you are going through. I know. Oh, Lottie. Lottie, what am I to do? Tell me, what am I to do? What everyone does when all else fails. And what is that? Turn to God. Lottie, I don't believe in God. Not after what happened to me. Did you believe before? I don't know. Never thought about it much. Oh, wait, let me. Hello? Uh, no, this is Madame Stern. Oh, yes, he is. One moment. Here, it's for you, Anton. Uh, someone named Bill Stone. Oh, yes, yes. A friend of mine works for United Press. Hello, Bill. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, well, I'm going to be all right. Yes? What? Strangled? Gordon and I thought... Shh, shh. Anton's on the phone, something. It's impossible. But, Bill, I know you better than to think you play any kind of sick joke on me. I don't care what they say at the FBI. Somebody made a mistake. Yes. Oh, well. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Thanks for calling. Anton, what is it? That was Bill Stone. You know Bill. Of course. Well, he said a story's just come in over the wire from Blaineyville. So that's where you had your accident, just outside Blaineyville? Yes. Dr. Barringer was found dead this afternoon in his office. Strangled. Strangled? By one hand. One hand? The, the, the bruises show yes, that one... that one hand strangled him to death. A right hand. Well, this is the strangest... It's more than strange, Alexis. It's impossible. Why impossible, Anton? Because, Lottie, they say it was my right hand that strangled him. <laughs> Bizarre. Words, unless, like Anton Wahlberg, you have experienced them. Then, strange, bizarre, macabre. Change from words to something alive in your bloodstream. Well, you're experiencing them now. You're imagining them. And there is nothing more alive than your imagination. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Certainly no greater tragedy could happen to a concert pianist than the loss of his right hand. And that is what happened to Anton Wahlberg seven weeks ago. Now in the music room of his expensive penthouse apartment in New York, Anton Wahlberg has received news that shocks him and his guests. They've made a mistake at the FBI, that's all. Darling, where did the FBI come into this? The hand that strangled Barringer touched things in his office. Left prints. The Blaineyville police wired them to the FBI, and my prints are on file. They are? Some years ago, Gordon, I took out a two and a half million dollar insurance policy on my hands. Thank God I did. And the insurance company naturally wanted my fingerprints for identification. Oh, I see. And the prints on file at the FBI... Match the prints found in Barringer's office. It's a mistake. I doubt if the FBI makes mistakes with fingerprints. Lottie, what else could it be? Lottie, will you stop looking so mysterious? You see, no hand, Lottie. It was cut off here. It's dead. Is it? Huh. That's a curious thing to say, Madam Stern. Dr. Lonsdale, what would they have done with Anton's severed hand? Well, you, it would have gone to the nearest mortuary. Very likely the coroner or medical examiner would examine it. 
Then it would have been destroyed. The hand. But not the spirit of the hand. Oh, good Lord, we're back in the psychic world now. I believe you don't. You will. I very much doubt that, Lottie. What I do believe is that my hand did not, could not have strangled Dr. Barringer. If it were possible, which it isn't, why? Why would my hand strangle Barringer? You know the answer, Anton. The hand could have been saved. And because it wasn't... Revenge? What else? Oh, nonsense. That's what else. Alexis, no I more. tell no, you, I... please. I asked you and Gordon to dinner tonight to help cheer Anton up. It's turning out to be the most depressing evening one can imagine. Now, if you don't mind, from here on in, we're going to talk about cheerful things. <laughs> Come in. Alexis said you were in the music room. You didn't want to be disturbed. So naturally, you disturbed me. I must talk to you. And you have shut yourself away for nearly a week now. Lottie, I don't want to see anyone, including you. Now, Anton, as your coach... Coach I... of what? A one-handed concert pianist? All right, as your business manager... You then. should reduce your fee by half. I'm only half a man, less. All right, as your friend... Yes, Lottie. Yes, you are that. And the best anyone ever had. So then you listen to me. You cannot go on burying yourself in this room. Why not? I am dead. You are anything but dead. All right, so you have one hand. There is much you can do with one hand. You can teach. I would loathe it. I did too, at first. Almost, I, I, I couldn't bring myself to it. Today, I am glad I did. It has been an experience as rewarding, well, <laughs> almost as rewarding as playing. I find that hard to believe, Lottie. You are going to stop brooding. You are going to come back into the world, Anton. You are going to become active again and take an interest in life starting tonight. Tonight? My new prodigy, Raphael Klein, the one I left in Chicago to come to you, he is performing tonight at Carnegie. Now, I want you to hear Raphael. You must hear him because you are going to be his teacher, his coach. You're his teacher, his coach. And I am old. I am too old to handle the younger generation. Raphael needs many things you can give him. Your fingering. Yes, Anton, I said your fingering. You can demonstrate that with one hand. Your interpretation, especially of Beethoven, and above all, your dedication, the need to, to practice, to practice, practice. Which reminds me, have you? Have I what? Practiced. You know, I think you're going mad, Lottie. Practice with just my left hand? Hmm. Well, keep the piano in tune at least. The hell with the piano! Did you hear that? Piano string losing tension. It happens to a piano and isn't played. So do me and the piano a favor. Play it. Do me a favor and get lost. All right. But you'll come tonight. Oh, have I any choice? No. All right, I'll come. Ah, one thing more. I have, um, not good news. Is there any other kind? No, be serious, Anton. This, um, has to do with money. Oh? Uh, about the insurance on your hands. Yes. The, the two and a half million. It, um... It may be the company isn't going to pay it. What? Oh, no, no, no. Come on, calm yourself. There's nothing definite about this yet. But I talked this morning with the senior vice president. He asked me to come and see him. I went. He said that according to the Blainville police report, the accident, well, you were at fault. Me? At fault? Anton, did you fall asleep at the wheel? You, you wouldn't lie to Lottie now, would you? Did you? Yes. Damn it, I was tired, Lottie, exhausted. The schedule you set up for me, a night in Atlanta, a night in Aiken, a night in Baton Rouge, a night here, a night there, traveling every day, what would you expect? You could have told me that you are getting older. All right, now. Tonight, my place for dinner, and then we go on to Carnegie. But what about the two and a half million, my insurance? We'll see. 
We may have to sue. Lottie, we will have to sue. I'm nearly broke, Lottie. Without that money, I might as well be dead. I will be. I'll see to that. What do you mean? I mean, I can't take anymore, Lottie. I can't suffer anymore. I'll kill myself. What was that? Need you ask? It was an unseen hand. An invisible hand. Your hand, Anton. Oh, no. What else? But it's impossible. And if it were possible, why? Because you said you would kill yourself. And your hand, the spirit of your hand, protested. But it is dead. Here we are. D-101 through 104. After you, Alexis. Thank you, Laurie. Now you, Anton, here. You sit between us. What a pity that Gordon couldn't make it at the last minute. Well, emergency operations, too bad. Well, he will hear my refill another time, for he will someday be famous. You are silent, Anton. You say nothing. What's to say? Oh, you don't always have to say something. You could be just pleasant. I will be, if I can think of anything to be pleasant about. Rafael Klein will change your mood. He will play first Chopin Fantasy Impromptu. It is one of your favorites. A favorite I shall never be able to play again. Oh. What is it, Anton? Now, look, Lottie, enough is enough. What are you talking about? You slapped my face. I didn't touch you. Yes, you did. Anton, I did not. Lottie, look at his cheek. Yes. It's red, as if someone did slap him. You? I assure you. Later, later. Oh, look, Alexis, is he not young and handsome? Oh, yes. Oh, that, too, is good for the box office. The women will go mad over him. Some sort of trouble. Oh God, it's as if he's fighting some invisible force. Look. Lottie, this is unbelievable. His right arm, it's hanging by his side, but his left hand plays for both the right and the left. I can't believe this is happening. I cannot believe the it. This cannot be performed with one hand, but he's doing it. It's a miracle. his dressing room cover. Oh, Rafael. Oh. Why did you leave the stage after the Chopin? I, I can't go on, Lottie. After performing a miracle, you can't go on. The entire audience is on its feet calling for you and you can't go on. After what just happened? What did happen out there, Mr. Klein? It, it was as if... Oh, you're Anton Volberg. Yes. Well, go on, tell me. What happened to you? Well, something, some force suddenly gripped my right arm, began to pull my hand, my, my right hand, off the keyboard. I, I, I didn't know what was happening to me. I thought I was having some sort of seizure. I was going mad or, or I don't know what. And, and then? My left hand kept playing. You mean you kept playing with your left no, hand? No, 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 Lottie, no. My right arm, it was forced down to my side, and, and I was scared. I was so scared I couldn't have gone on playing with my left, and I didn't. It did. Your left hand went on playing by itself? I, I, I certainly didn't go on playing. My left hand didn't even feel to be a, a part of me. I couldn't have done what my hand did, play for both the right and the left. But we saw. You must have practiced. Lottie, how can you practice the impossible? The fantasy cannot be played with one hand. But you did it. No, not me. I, I don't know what, but... <laughs> Not me. There's no understanding this. No understanding it at all. No, we will talk of this later after the concert. No, Lottie, I, I told you, I can't go on. I'm, I'm, I'm shaken up. I'm a bunch of nerves. Better you control your nerves than we return their money. Now pull yourself together, Raphael, and go out but there. But, Lottie, go! I Do as Lottie says, Mr. Klein. There's greatness in you, but you'll never reach it if you let nerves take the upper hand. <sighs> all right. I'll go back on, then. 
lot. Anton, should you have sent him back on stage? He's terribly shaken. He must learn control. He must learn discipline. Discipline is everything. Even to performing miracles? What do you mean, dear? No, even the thought is foolish. What thought? Klein, he's young, inexperienced. I'm a veteran of the concert stage. Skilled, practiced, experienced. So? Well, if his left hand could perform like that, why not mine? Oh, my dear. He did it. His hand. Yes, it seemed like a miracle, but was it? It moved up and down that keyboard so fast it appeared to be in two places at once. True, that's very true. You know what I think? What, dear? Another foolish thought, perhaps, but... I think it was my hand that gripped his arm out there tonight. Now, darling... I know, I know it's crazy, but... Could it be that the hand... My hand... Lottie, the spirit of my hand was trying to show me what can be done with one hand? Can Anton Wahlberg possibly find enough faith in himself to, well, perform virtual miracles at the piano? Surely this seems to be what the spirit of his hand is trying to tell him, that he can, and yet, really now. Is not the impossible impossible? We shall see when I return shortly with Act Three. What is spirit? What is it that lives in you and in me that impels us to make supreme efforts now and then and nags us when we fail? And yes, leaves us in peace when we succeed. All religions teach that it is a spark of God that burns deep in our souls. And we are put here on this earth to learn how to fan that spark into flames. Anton Wahlberg has touched that tiny spark, but wonders now if he can fan it into flame. I can't do it. I can't. It's impossible. I was a fool to think it could be anything else. You have been trying for less than a week. I shouldn't have tried at all. What Raphael Klein did that night, there was something supernatural. It had to be. But this piano isn't supernatural, and neither am I. All right. All right, Anton. You have practiced enough. Now, Anton, I must, I must speak to you. I spent several hours at the insurance company today. Several hours? Yes, they had much to tell me, much to show me. There is more than enough evidence to prove negligence on your part, Anton. Evidence that proves you are driving at approximately 75 miles an hour at a time when you are in an exhausted state and you must have fallen asleep at the wheel. They deny the claim. Well, they... Offer a compromise, a settlement. I will not... Now, you will wait a minute. Always you will not this and you will that. Now, please, listen. And then, if you want, you'll throw a tantrum. I'm listening. All right. The terms of the policy are clear. They're all too clear. They are well within their rights, the company, not to honor the claim. Still, you have paid the premium for many years and they wish to be fair with you. Mm. So they offer you the compromise. They settle for $100,000. Fair. They settle two and a half million for 100000 How long can I live on that? That's peanuts. So you will live on peanuts until you discipline your left hand to perform for the right one as well. Now don't look at me as if I'm crazy. It can be done. You saw it done. You saw the spirit of your hand pointing the way, showing you. You are not only old and fat, you are mad. Absolutely. Uh, okay to come in. Ada said we'd find you in the music room. Come in, Gordon. Come in. Uh, Madam Stern. Oh, Dr. Lundell, it's good to see you. I apologize again for missing your dinner, the Klein concert the other night, but couldn't be helped. You are forgiven. Hmm. Well, I... Anton, you wanted to see me? Yes, yes, I'd like your opinion, Gordon. The opinion of a professional man, a man who knows what he's talking about when it comes to the human body and what it's capable of. Yes? Gordon, Raphael Klein did a remarkable thing the other night. Oh, I know, I read the critics the next day. He did the impossible, I understand. But he did it. Lottie, please. 
Gordon, what I want to know, what I want you to tell me, can I duplicate what Klein did? Hmm. Play a piano concerto that requires two hands with only one? Yes. Lottie says I can. I say I can't. I've tried for nearly a week now, and I find it impossible. In your opinion, if I were to go on trying, could I do it? Well, I've been thinking about what Klein did and puzzling over it, and frankly, I can't explain it. I understand his right arm suddenly became paralyzed. Is, is that so, Madam Stern? You might put it that way. Oh, well, what other way would there be? Well, that night, in the excitement of what happened, I'm afraid we all acted a bit stupidly, Gordon. I'm ashamed to say that even I believed that my right hand, the, the, the spirit of my hand, had taken hold of Klein's right arm and forced it down to his side. <laughs> You may well look at me as if I were out of my mind, Gordon, but I did think that at the time. I can see you've changed your mind. And you, Alexis? Well, I... Uh, uh, Madam Stern? No, I have not. But, my dear Madam Stern, You do not, not understand, Dr. Lonsdale. Some curious things have happened, things which cannot be explained in the normal way. The fingerprints that prove Anton's hand strangled Dr. Berenger. Well, a mistake in the fingerprint. You file. know that's not probable. It's possible. That piano there, it has played with no one near it. Played by an unseen hand. How do you explain that? Mm. That's a tough one, man. Huh? Gordon, I apologize. I didn't ask you to come here to put you through an inquisition. All I want to know is, do you think I can do what Klein did that night? I don't mean perform miracles. I mean, with practice discipline, could I train my left hand to move quickly enough, skillfully enough to do the work of both? No. No, of course not. You did... Gordon! Gordon! Uh, my throat! Uh, it's choking! Uh, what, it's away. the hand! Just... It is the hand! No, no, I command you, stop! You hear? Stop! Oh, oh, oh. oh, good Lord. Are you all right? Oh, I, I hope so. What, whatever gripped my throat, the power, the strength, the... it was the hand. Now I know. Anton. No, Alexis. Now I believe. The other night, you remember, Lottie, when I said I'd kill myself if the insurance company denied my claim? The hand banged angrily on the piano. It was telling me I was wrong to think such things. In Carnegie Hall, just before Klein came on stage, I said I'd never be able to play again, and the hand slapped my face. And then the hand, the spirit, demonstrated through Raphael Klein what the human body can accomplish. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to do it, and if it's humanly possible, I will. With God's help, I will. I can't, Lottie, I can't, I can't. Look at my hand, it's swollen with practice, numb with the effort of trying and failing. I said I would do the impossible with God's help, but even God has given up. Yes. He gets tired, too, sometimes. No one here is tired as I am. Maybe you are trying too hard. Can you try too hard? I think maybe, perhaps. Sometimes. I learned this in Auschwitz. It is better to stop trying and ask God to help you make the effort. After all, he has to make the effort, too. And what do you do instead? You lean on him instead. Oh, come, Lottie. No, no, no. I mean it. We are controlled by the spirit within us. It was only when I stopped thinking and so stopped trying, leaned on God, and <laughs> the silly thought could be he leaned on me too. It's so much easier for both to lean instead of making an effort, temporarily, you know, to, to, to give a little rest. Well, things worked out. When I stopped pushing, life stopped pushing back. And maybe, who knows, maybe we didn't understand the hand. Not understand it? I don't know. 
Well, anyhow, I have come to ask you a favor, Anton. A big favor. Of course, Lottie. Anything. I cannot coach Rayfield any longer. I am too old. And he is beyond me now. But not beyond you. Not yet even approaching your skill. Now, I know that you don't want to teach. All right. I don't ask you to take him on permanently, but would you... He wants it. I want it. Would you coach him now and then? No, 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 Lottie, I couldn't. But why not? A half hour here, a half hour there, when it's convenient. Shall I tell you the truth? I couldn't bear it. Why not? Because he is young, and I am not. He is on the way up, and I am finished. He has two hands. Yes. Well... I'll tell him. He will be disappointed. I'm sorry, love. It's all right. Oh, before I go, I almost forgot. Um, here, here's the check for ninety thousand dollars, the insurance. Ninety thousand. What happened to the other ten? It's my ten percent. I have to live too. <laughs> Alexis, no. She's here, I darling. I don't care. You I don't must. care. So who cares you don't care? Come in, Rafi. Come in. Lottie, I am telling you. Enough. Alexis, dear, please, some coffee. Yes, of course, Lottie. Now, Anton, you don't have to coach him. You don't have to teach him, but you can show him. And that is what you're going to do because I, Lottie Stern, say that is what you're going to do. All right, Lottie, what is it? He is having trouble with the impromptu, and he has a concert in St. Louis in ten days. You can show him in an hour. All right. All right, go help Alexis make the coffee. All right, Klein, sit down. Play it. of humanity. Stop it. You call yourself a concert pianist? Play like that? You've had a few concerts, have you? So what? Big deal. Carnegie Hall? Big, big deal. You want to know something? You stink. The way you're playing that passage, I can smell it. I'm, I'm sorry, maestro. You're sorry? And stop calling me maestro. Y y I told you that. Now try it again with less odor. Y y yes. Stop talking, damn it, and play. Yes, Anton. Yes, Anton. Yes, Anton. But you don't listen. If you listen, you'd hear. And if you heard, you would do. A lot better than you've been doing for the last five hours. You tired? <laughs> Dead tired. Have some more coffee. It's cold. We'll get used to it. Hot coffee backstage is always cold. How are your hands? Uh, Okay. You want a hot towel for them? No, no, I'm, I'm all right. Then begin again. From the top. No, 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 stop it! You are terrible! There is no other word for the way you play. Terrible! I give you up. No, no, I give you up. <laughs> you give me up. You, you, you keep talking, talking, talking. Do it this way, do it that way. <laughs> what do you think I'm made of? What the hell do you think I'm made of? If you know so damn well how it ought to be done, you do it. I only got one hand. Then use it. <laughs> show me with your left hand. If you think you're such a hot shot pianist, show me. Don't tell me, show me. My God, I will. Get off that bench. Get off of it. Let Anthony Wahlberg show you. I'm playing. I've got both hands. My left hand plays. 
thing for both, but it's impossible. Play. Play. Go on, play. It was a trick, Lottie. <laughs> All a trick. What else? He deliberately played badly. He could play that passage better than you ever could. And Taj, he was a smash in St. Louis. He'll be a smash in the world. He'll surpass me. <laughs> that is so difficult. <laughs> it makes you feel better to insult me. <laughs> uh, Anton. Anton, we have been through so much together, so much. And now, a new life begins for you. You will be Rafi Klein's Madame Stern. His coach, his manager. No, Lottie. I will be his Anton Wahlberg. There is only one Madame Lottie Stern. True. So I'll coach you how to coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Alexis. Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you two, but more tea? Yes, darling. Thank you. Um, you, you, you wouldn't uh, maybe have some schnapps, just a little at a, a touch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am getting old. It's a chill in my veins. Good excuse as any. Lottie, hmm? the piano there. Not a sound out of it since I agreed to coach Rafe. Not a sound. We were wrong. The hand, it was pointing the way to a new career. No, not the hand. Not the hand? God. <laughs> God works in mysterious ways his miracles to perform. Says so in the Bible. Must be so. But how often in your life, how often in mine, have we moved toward one goal only to end up at another? And then, who's to say which was the right goal? I think God. What do you think? I'll be back shortly. I'm asked, these stories you tell us, are they true? I can only answer, what do we mean by true? Some actually happened in real life, as we say. Others, uh, let me confess, are products of my imagination. And most important, yours. But how real is real life? And how real is imagination? Yours and mine. Difficult question. I try to answer it sometimes. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Marion Seldes... Carol Titel, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. What do you have in the pet carrier box? I hate to tell you, but... Oh, dear, not again. I'm afraid so. Oh, you are so careless with pets, Hugo. That's four cats dead already this year. Mm. Oh, uh, you'll... Uh... Want to bury this one out by the roses, too. If I may. Well, it, it's it's getting a wee bit crowded, but uh, I'm sure you'll find a nice little spot. What happened to that pussycat of yours, Hugo? She, uh, she had an accident. Oh. Oh, what sort of accident? To tell you the truth, she, uh, she sort of lost her head. Oh, you leave your door open and your poor little cat rushes out into traffic, particularly on that busy street you live on. What do you expect? Well, well, dear, you, you'd better hurry. It's, it's getting dark. Yes, that's what I was waiting for. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
CBS News is next on WBBM Chicago.